All right, so I'm going to have to go quickly. Um, but as I said, I want to say briefly something about many worlds interpretation before getting on to, to uh, the many interacting worlds. So I can relate this back to what I was talking about in terms of the wave function uh, as followed. Is that the, the wave function for, for remembering this is just the wave function for everything, wave function for the universe, uh, is a very highly structured field in position, okay? Uh, and in particular, it's going to, if you do a bit of smoothing out, uh, it's going to have local maxima at a vast number of macroscopically different configurations, which I'll call Q1, Q2, et cetera, uh, with, a, with a little twiddle on top just to, to say that that's where the, the maxima are. So you could think of these as being many worlds, okay? This is not exactly the way it was first presented, but if I wanted to relate it back to the Bohmian, I think this is a clear way of, of saying it. So then as time increases, uh, what you find also is that these local maxima are liable to split into, say, two or more other local maxima, okay, as time goes on. Uh, and, uh, and this is exactly the, the sort of branching or splitting that Everett talked about in 1957. And so this is a cartoon of Schrodinger's cat splitting into uh, you know, the live and the dead uh, branches here. Okay, so, the, uh, you know, we'll probably hear more about this. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a valid interpretation to say that's real, but why, so why not just go with that? Uh, so I think there are, there are a number of issues which can be raised there. First, it's not clear exactly what, you know, you're saying is real, and I think different people different adherence to the many worlds interpretation actually have different answers. Uh, if you say that it, it is the wave function that's the thing that's real, well, then you have the problem that in, in some sense that wave function you know, can just be represented by a vector in Hilbert space. Uh, and so then how can you know, something just pointing in some vast dimensional Hilbert space um, represent the world? How can it have any structure? Okay? Uh, and in particular, because all it does in its dynamics is just you know, rotate around you know, the Hamiltonian direction. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it seems like that, where, where do you find the world in that? Um, on the other hand, you could say, well, let's, let's look at these configuration space because that's where you can see all the structure in the many worlds. Um, but then the, the question is, well, what exactly are you saying is real? If these maxima are real, well, it, how many maxima you have depends on exactly how you do this coarse graining. And, you know, when they split will depend, yeah, also depend on that. So it's all, it's all a bit vague. There's no definite ontology there. Another problem is that uh, is always going to be faced is that some worlds are, in, you know, more real than others. That when you get this splitting, uh, the the heights of the maxima, if you like, are not going to be equal. Uh, well, that's only a very vague way of putting it. But but the point is that you have different coefficients in in front of this uh, of these two orthogonal states here, uh, and we could have that mod alpha is bigger than mod beta. Okay, which in some sense says that this world is bigger than that world. But, you know, for the people in those worlds, it's going to feel just as real. Uh, so why should I, at the moment before the split, uh, care about, you know, which world I end up in this particular ratio of mod alpha squared to mod beta squared? Uh, and there, are, I think I'll skip over that one. Okay, uh, so Bohmian mechanics and many worlds, uh, let's put them together. Okay. Um, so first of all, Bohmian mechanics in the light of the many worlds interpretation. A many world would well say, uh, say that Bohmian mechanics, and this is an exact quote, is just many worlds in denial. Because Bohmian mechanics postulates this wave function for the universe exactly the same as many worlds does. So what, you know, if you're partial to many worlds, why would you add anything else? Um, so in, in the Bohmian mechanics, the true configuration of the universe will typically be near one of these many worlds interpretation. Um, sorry, one of these many worlds in the many worlds interpretation. So that leaves all these other maxima as not having an X associated with them. Uh, and so you could ask the question, well, what about all these empty uh, worlds? Uh, won't they feel real to the, to the you know, people who inhabit those worlds? Uh, and so this is just a little joke. Um, so Lev Weidman uh, once said, one of us, Lev Weidman, used to view the Bohmian interpretation as the most elegant way, pointing out one of the many worlds of the Everett interpretation as real, uh, but then he changed his mind. Um, and so here I have Lev. Uh, so this is a Bohmian particle inhabiting Lev over here. Uh, Lev going onto a beam splitter. And so then we get two copies of Lev in two worlds coming out. Uh, only one of them is real. Uh, and that's the one that's saying, on reflection, I changed my beliefs. Uh, and the one who goes through says, um, you know, I used to believe in this, but it left me with an empty feeling. 
Okay, that's the empty, that's the empty lev, that's the empty wave, and this is called the empty wave problem. Okay, so, so what that's suggesting is that there's, a, the problem with Bohmian mechanics is there's not enough reality. Like why, if this is real, why isn't this, if this lev is real, why isn't this lev real? You know, there should be, why don't we have a thing associated with that a, as well? Uh, and again, I think I'll skip over that. All right, so we can actually solve these problems if you, if you believe that they're problems, uh, all of these um, with this uh, new approach called many interacting worlds. So uh, a way to motivate that is just to look at this picture of, uh, in, of you know, uh, the Bohmian trajectories for a two-slit experiment. And, and if you look at it, you just say, well, it looks like a bunch of particles which are repelling each other. Uh, so the question is, why not take that uh, literally and so the first person to, to talk about this in detail, and we'll hear from him later today, uh, was Bill Poirier uh, in 2010. Uh, but we didn't know about that when we started working on it. Uh, and there's a slight difference in our approach in that we actually imagine a finite uh, but extremely large ensemble of worlds rather than a sort of continuum. But apart from that, the idea is very, is very similar. Uh, and um, no, so, Right, okay, so I, I, I want to wrap up as, as soon as I can. But uh, so very briefly, maybe I'll just do it with the pictures. So this is the idea that we think of, um, let's start by just thinking of Bohmian mechanics, but where I don't say one of these trajectories corresponds to the real world, but I rather say all of them correspond to the real world, okay? Um, but once I do that and postulate all these real Bohmian trajectories, then there's a nice bit of, bit of mathematics which says, at least in, in some limit, okay, that it should actually be possible to get the dynamics of that real ensemble of particles without using the wave function. Okay? If the initial conditions are right, uh, I can postulate, so this is at least, we, what we've done at least is a toy model for this, uh, to write down an explicit interaction between nearby worlds, right? so that all of these worlds are real, Okay, so there's nothing which can say that they can't interact, right? Uh, and so we postulate actually a, so it's, this is just Newton's equation, right? If I only had this potential, this is the normal Newtonian potential, then I just have Newtonian mechanics. But now I postulate this extra uh, potential, this interworld uh, potential of, of, in this one dimensional case, of um, the, the world interacting with just the neighboring worlds on either side, okay? Uh, and so that's a particular form uh, in, in our toy model. Uh, and what we, yeah, what we claim is that in the limit that n goes into in, to infinity, uh, we should recover the virtual Bohmian ensemble from this. So importantly, so there's no wave function in the ontology of the theory. It's just the, the whole ensemble of particles. Uh, these, these ensemble of worlds is real, not virtual. Uh, and they have to be real because they're actually interacting. Okay, so that's the many interacting worlds. Uh, so just to show that it, it, it does work, at least uh, quali qualitatively, and this is the exact uh, solution for Bohmian trajectories for uh, using the quantum wave function. Uh, and this is using no wave function at all, just an ensemble of trajectories interacting. Uh, and there are little differences, as you can see, but qualitatively, uh, it looks pretty similar. And this is only with an ensemble of the number of worlds you see here. So I think it's 41. 41 worlds uh, here. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so those of you here two years ago would have seen that I had a similar plot, but the, the, the right hand side looked much worse. Uh, we got better numerics, uh, and so it, it is actually much better than, than it looked two years ago. Okay, um, so we've done, we've done a bunch of other stuff. I think I, I'll probably just skip over all of that. Uh, we have a whole lot of open questions, um, but maybe I'll, I'll leave that and just uh, finish my final slide just putting up a recapitulation of everything I've talked about. Thanks. <laughs>